Hey, this is Tyler, Technical Evangelist for Portrait Displays. In this video, we're going to be calibrating an AZO CG279X. That's one of the color edge monitors. It supports 3D LUT calibration. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So the first step is we're going to open our 3D LUT workflow. So I'm going to go up to the CalMan menu, go down to Workflow Template, and go to Calibration, and then select 3D LUT. Now we're going to select Optimize Display plus 3D LUT. Now at this step, we're going to connect to our hardware. This includes our measurement device, the pattern source, and the display itself. So first, I'm going to go to Find Meter. In this case, we're using the Portrait Displays HDR 2000 meter. So we want to make sure this top one is checked and then hit search. Okay, now for a meter mode, we're going to be calibrating and selecting our uh, LCD LED PFS phosphor. The next step is we're going to connect our pattern generator. Now, in this process, we're going to be calibrating this monitor as a video display device that's being fed video level range. So it's not going to be used as a computer monitor. So we're going to be calibrating in video levels. So we're actually using a pattern generator, the, the Portrait Displays Video Forge Pro, as our pattern generator. So we're going to go to Find Source. We're going to select Video Forge Pro here, select our COM port, and then hit Connect. Okay, now we're connected to that. Now the next step is to connect to our AZO uh, CG279X as a display. Now, one thing to be aware of is you want to turn off any automatic self-calibration functionality in the monitor since we're going to be calibrating it with CalMan. We don't want the internal calibration process its built-in meter and stuff to overwrite our calibration that we perform here. So I've already done that in the menu system of the display. Now I've also connected the display to my PC that's running CalMan with a USB A to B cable. That's where one end looks like a normal USB cable and the other end kind of looks like a barrel connector. And it's typically previously was used on printers and external hard drives, but that is the type of cable that is necessary to perform this uh, calibration. So I've already plugged that into the AZO. Now I'm going to hit Find Display. I'm going to select AZO, then Color Edge Monitor 3D LUT. Make sure you're not selecting the 1D LUT. We want to use the 3D LUT, and then hit Connect. OK, now we're connected. Now, the way these monitors work is there is a CAL mode for each input. So in this case, we're using the HDMI input, and so it is going to go to mode 10. Okay. So now we want to do full DDC reset to reset the monitor. Now this is only reset our mode 10, which on the monitor equals Cal mode. Okay, next step is we're gonna set up our targets. We're just gonna use the defaults, but you could set any specific targets you would like. We're gonna to go to next, we're gonna to go to next. Now the display has been reset to its panel native. So if we re measure our pre-calibration measurements, then it will be panel native. Now, if you would like to compare your pre-calibration to post-calibration with one of the built-in picture modes like Rec. 709 or Adobe RGB or any of those, you can do that as well. In that case, you would just switch it right now to that mode and then switch it back to mode 10 after you do your pre-calibration measurements.
Okay, our pre-calibration measurements are done. We can go on to the next page. Now we're going to set our peak luminance. Typically you want to make it about 15% brighter than your actual target. So in this case I'm targeting 100 nits. It's already 115 nits. If I needed to turn it up, I would go up here to the DDC menu. And I would use one of these buttons to go over. And I could adjust this backlight control up and down to set to whatever target I want. So if you were going to be in a bright room like an office environment, maybe you would want it at 150 or 200 nits, for example. Okay, so we're at 115. Go to next. Now, this display, we're doing all of its calibration with a 3D lookup table. So we're not going to, there is no white balance controls uh, when we're doing that process. So we're going to skip this page. And same with the 1D LUT page. We're only doing a 3D LUT for this calibration, so we can skip over this page as well. Now it's time to do our 3D LUT. So we're going to hit our Auto Cal button and select Lightning LUT from our drop down here and hit OK. And it's going to read 101 measurements and calculate our 3D LUT from that. Okay, that took a little over six and a half minutes. So we're going to now go on to our post calibration measurements. So we're going to hit the read series button here. Okay, our post calibration capture is complete. We can either now generate a report or we can do additional validation, which I usually always recommend doing. So now we're gonna run the color checker patch set, which is based on x right Pantone's color checker patches. So now, once again, we're gonna hit our read series button. Okay, now this is complete. Our average DE2000 is 0.2 with a max of 0.8. Next step is to run our 
saturation sweeps. So this is desaturating from white to fully saturated red, green, blue, cyan, yellow, magenta. So once again, we're going to run read series. Okay, our saturation sweeps are now complete. So now we could generate a report and save our session. Thank you very much for watching this video, and don't forget, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you next time.